Go ahead and start the recording. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Maximize Your History Day research. Uh, my name is Lori, and I'm one of the teen instructors here with Howard County Library System. We're really glad that you could join us tonight for this fantastic opportunity for you to learn about History Day resources that are available right here in our community. And we're going to jump right in. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what our program will entail tonight. We're going to feature uh, a talk from Deborah uh, of the Howard County Library System, who's going to go over specifically what uh, your own local library can offer you. Then we're going to uh, feature Alex from Maryland Center for History and Culture, uh, John from the Maryland State Library Resource Center, and Leah from Maryland Humanities. We do ask during our presentations that you type your questions in the chat box. Um, and we may have time for specific questions after each presentation. And hopefully at the end, we'll have a general Q&A session as well. So again, uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Deborah. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Second. to share my sound just as an in case. So yes, my name is Deborah Basilovich. I work at the Elkridge branch of the Howard County Library System. So uh, communication and history, the key to understanding. Um, if you're curious, we have had a, uh, a couple of different classes, one on topic development, one on thesis development. We're going to have another thesis class uh, workshop on Monday, starting at seven o'clock. So please, if you haven't joined us for one, uh, feel free to come in. We're also going to post them to video. So communication in history, lots of potential topics that you could floor. Okay, but it, think of it as um, a puzzle, okay, when you're doing the research and you're looking for the different pieces um, so that you can connect the evidence and see the big picture. So uh, research strategies. Um, start broadly, basically read around the subject, explore, browse. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. So the topic is uh, communication and history, the key to understanding. Um, and I'm gonna go through this really quickly. So you wanna spot the act or absence of communication and understanding, explore time and place, um, are there allies Who's involved? Are there sides? Is there resistance? You definitely want to have change, change um, in the immediacy and change over uh, a long period of time and that it has an impact. So um, if you've ever had a puzzle and dumped it out on the table, you know that's a lot of pieces. So where do you start? Um, sometimes what I like to do is look for the edges, um, basically those boundaries. Okay, so sometimes that helps me um, start the puzzle. Well, research kind of has those boundaries too. Research questions are, are a kind of boundary and set for yourself, and they help shape the kind of information that you need. What do I mean by that? Well, you're starting with a subject. Let's say, let's say Jackie Robinson. Okay and you're really, really interested in Jackie Robinson. Maybe not sure how you're going to bring that in, um, but, um, but showing that um, he broke boundaries and his act of uh, playing in the major leagues as one of the very first African-Americans to do so um, was an act of communication itself. And so you come up with a question and maybe it's something broad, like you just want to know about his life and you're going to do some research. And then you're going to, it's going to result in an action, okay? So you are going to maybe go to the library, you're gonna get a book, you're going to look online, you're going to do something that will get you um, an answer to your question. And you're going to have new information when you're done. And the information can be a, a complete surprise. 
But now you're going to have your subject, but now you, you're going to develop a new question based on this new information. Let's say you were researching Jackie Robinson and you learned that, hey, Jackie Robinson was in the army and he was brought up on a general court martial because he refused to leave his seat on a bus. This was an army bus. The white bus driver saw, saw him sitting there next to a woman who he assumed was white. She looked white. She wasn't, but she looked white. And he demanded that Jackie go to the back of the bus and Jackie refused for several reasons. One, he read voraciously and he was aware that there had already been several cases within the army dealing with that same situation. So he knew that he didn't have to, um, but it went all the way up the chain and there was a court martial. He, it, it um, fortunately he, um, did not get court-martialed and what's interesting and you can get that um you can actually see the transcript of that entire court-martial online right for primary sources if you're curious and so uh blanche ritchie was then interested i'm going to go back real quick blanche ritchie was really interested in looking for someone qualified uh, for uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers and looked at, at um, that transcript. So if you're looking for communication and history, that's communication um, because the communication that he, um, uh, it was just it, he, his communication and skills to defend himself during that procedure um, really were, was inspirational. So, um, and, and the process will continue. You'll get more questions the deeper you dig and they will direct your research and then also what you're interested in. So I also suggest you um, surf different um, subject headings. Um, hclibrary.org is our website. If you have a library card with your school, if you attend the public school system, um, then you can go in through your Canvas Me page. Um, books are sold, shelved by subject, okay? And so while you're not physically looking at the, uh, the books, uh, you can still do that virtually, okay? Um, bibliographies are really, really good. Um, when I say avoid fuzzy catalog searches, you know, if you were to look on... Google or Amazon, you can spell things incorrectly. You, you have to spell them correctly for the library. So, um, but you just refine your search. Interlibrary loans are, are in service. We are doing them right now. What is an in, interlibrary loan? If you were with us uh, for the last class, we went over how you could get different materials uh, from WorldCat. That is World Catalog. So um, you can look to see what is out there. If we don't have it physically in our library or even electronically at our library, that doesn't mean we can't get it for you, okay? Um, we can, we will work for it. I'm going to make a caveat. Sometimes that takes a little while, okay? So you wanna give us enough time to get the materials. Um, we. Have, you know, check the indexes and chapter headings. You don't necessarily have to read the entire book, okay? And ask a librarian. Okay, we are still working. We are here. We want to help. Okay, scholarly secondary sources. So this is our website. If you were to go into it regularly, HC for Howard County Library, the word library written out, dot org. And there's a lot of ways to get to the information. Uh, I just, it's like if you're going to a friend's house, it depends on who's driving and the traffic. But research that button right there in the middle seems to make um, the most sense. And if you go there, you will have um, this page comes up and it'll show you HCLS now that's the name of this page. You can also go there from that um, uh, point up there. 
and it brings up this one page and you can actually type into this power search um, your topic. And what that's going to do is going to search all of our Gale products. What does that mean? Our databases are published by different companies. And one of those companies um, that publish databases is Gale. There are others and they each have their own look, but they're fairly similar in the content that they offer as far as, um, you know, cite, citing sources, um, mapping, and other elements. And so you can put your search term in there and it will search multiple Gale products all at once for you. Well, so that will save you time. Now, what does that mean? It means you're going to get a lot of results back, right? So as you progress, you can narrow things down. Other places that you can go to, history day research, homework assistance, these are other options. Oh, and before I go, let me just show you, just as our books are broken down by subject, so too our databases are. Uh, what you don't see here, um, because the list actually extends a little bit longer, um, there's also um, uh, newspapers and others. But right here, it says History Day Resource. And if you were to go to our History Day page, okay, as you can see, lots of information. We have links to the national site, the Maryland site. Um, we also have the contest rule book and we have dates to remember. And then we have specific source, uh, specific databases that we believe would be very helpful um, in finding primary sources. Okay, especially the American periodicals. Um, there's some wonderful, wonderful newspaper sources here. And um, as you can see, even some of them that are focused, you would think like the Baltimore Afro-American archives have has an East Coast perspective, right? Because Baltimore, but it was one of the earliest African-American newspapers. And so it is very, very interesting and um, important with the perspective of people from people of color at the time. Um, and it really was national. We also, if you had page down, you would see that we have different classes and other um, features. So if we were to um, go into um, a particular um, database, and here I was looking for um, what was I looking for? Penicillin looks like, and Fleming. And so it pulls up a lot of different researches. And this is the Gale Power Search that I talked about before. And up at the top, it's broken down by magazines, academic journals, books, news, images. So depending on what you're looking for, you know, you can click onto those um, to help um, narrow down your search. You can also come over here and narrow it down. Their filters are over here. We have full text documents, that's important. So you don't get an abstract. So you don't get an overview or summary. You want the whole article. Topic Finder is also nice. This is advanced search, okay? So you can get more specific and you can put in more terms. Okay, here are documents with full text. You could do peer reviewed and publication dates. So you can actually put in a range of dates or you can say after a certain date. Um, in previous classes, I was using the War of the Worlds, um, Orson Welles broadcast as an example of a topic. So I might just put in, you know, anything after 1938, right? Um, and then see what comes up if I were to put in that topic. Or I might say 1938 to a specific year just to see what um, would come up, okay? So this is the topic finder that I mentioned. And this is a lot of fun, especially if you are a visual learner. This is nice because once you put the topic in here, um, it breaks it down, okay? So remember this was, um, Fleming and it was penicillin. So here we have antibiotics, drug, um, infections. So we can look here to see um, 
what it is that you would like to um, dig into to get a little bit deeper. They can make connections for you. That will be very helpful. And reading journal, to read a journal articles. So read the abstract, that is the, the summary. Okay, if you find that it's not relevant, then you can skip the rest, uh, but be sure to mine the bibliography because there might be some really good um, uh, clues there. Um, if um, then afterwards you can just move on, but if after you've read the abstract and you think it might be re relevant, read the introduction and the conclusion because the meat of that article will be in those two places, okay? Um, if there's some useful bits, um, find the parts you like, and then again, mine the bibliography. Um, if you think, wow, this is awesome, this is perfect, obviously you're gonna read it all the way through and then repeat that last step. So after you start broadly, you're going to start. This. So sorry, I have treats here. And then you're going to consider a method of presentation. Obviously, this is also something that you'll be working with your teacher. You'll come up with a thesis statement um, and start to put them together with primary sources. And again, you can find lots of primary sources um, on the places that I mentioned. Also, here are some other places. Look at university collections. A lot of times you can get there. Museums are treasure troves. Libraries outside Maryland, just like our state and county has libraries, so two other states and counties have libraries. And guess what? Often you can see quite a lot of the material um, that is digital without having a, a library card there. Or you could get one, even being out of state. Um, the Hanover Historical Text Project, especially if you're doing anything um, warfare related. The ancient, um, actually I talked about this to someone at one of the, um, whoever was here at one of the, the last, um, classes, the Internet um, Ancient History source book. That's the Fordham University. Um, there's also, it also has a medieval source book. Oxford Reference is fabulous. So is Explora. Mavor's um, and um, Eurodocs. You have to be careful with Eurodocs because some of those links are not current, but it's still a really good place. Um, to look, Smithsonian Learning Lab also has some really nicely curated. I have another list that I'm gonna show you in a little bit, but when you're coming up with an idea, here we have Triumph and Tragedy, which was years ago, but basically you're gonna narrow it down until you can find exactly what it is um, that you are interested in focusing on. Um, so I'm not really going to go into a thesis statement right now and what that is. Um, but basically, um, at the end, you're going to evaluate your sources, um, weigh the evidence. Um, this is a good time to see where you might need maybe a little bit more statistics or um, take a look at your buckets and see where you might fill it up. Um, and analysis. How will the source be used in my project? What themes or issues in this document remind me of the patterns I've seen already studying this uh, period or this subject, this topic? What is the value, merit, or benefit of the source to my project? Is there anything missing? And how does the information in this source connect to what I already know about this time period that I am researching? Um, and there's one more thing that I want to show you before I go to um, Alex, um, what I'm going to do, and hopefully not get anybody dizzy, um, I am going to show you. You can actually get this from our website. It's called Making Sense of um, Evidence, and it has some really, really good information on scholarship and 
Here we have making sense of different documents, oral history, films. It really is a treasure trove. So when you get to that piece where you're analyzing, take a look at some of the suggestions that they have. And I think that um, that could be very helpful. So um, I am going to stop sharing right now. Okay. And now I'm going to pass it to Alex. Take it away. Thanks so much. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen um, so that everyone can kind of see. All right. Well, I hope you all can can see um, can see my screen. Um, I, uh, so my name is Alex Lawson. I am at the Maryland Center for History and Culture. Um, I want to thank you all so much for for joining us uh, today um, and for coming to uh, this this presentation. Thank you to Howard County uh, Libraries for for putting this on. Um, so. Uh, about us, we are, I don't know if, if my images on the side are kind of blocking my, uh, my, my uh, screen, um, but, um, sorry, one second, um, sorry, give me one second, I'm having some trouble, apologize. Um, so we are, uh, we are the Maryland Center for History and Culture, we're in the Mount Vernon District of Baltimore, we were formerly known as the Maryland Historical Society, so you might have known us as that. Um, we are located at 610 Park Avenue. Um, we have free parking available, which is great. Um, so uh, you can come, you can park, you can come in. We're open uh, to the public. Our research library is open as well. So you can come and kind of make a day of it. Um, we have, we're have we a museum, so we have about 13 exhibits focused on Maryland and national history. Um, and these are great because uh, uh, we have exhibits focused from early, Maryland and American history to more modern civil rights movement to 400 years of looking at Maryland fashion history to uh, the War of 1812. So we have a ton of, of great uh, material. Um, our collection has around 7 million documents and almost 300,000 objects. Um, and uh, of these 7 million documents, almost every single document is able to be accessible for research. Um, so it's really great if you're doing a topic, uh, uh, we might if it's Maryland related, we probably have something on that. Um, and, uh, you know, you are able to come in and handle the documents, these original primary sources from the 1600s all the way up to the uh, 21st century, you're able to come in and handle these documents and, and be hands on with history. Um, so our philosophy at the Maryland Center for History and Culture is, um, uh, the idea is Maryland is called American in miniature, one for its geography, but also because most of Maryland's stories can be tied to U.S. history. Um, so because of that, we always suggest choosing local National History Day topics. Um, they provide you, uh, local and state history topics provides you interesting stories and unique projects, ones that judges might not know about or may have never seen before. Um, and they give you easier access to primary and secondary sources. Um, because the stories are local, you can, you can physically go to the site, you can uh, go to local libraries, archives, museums that have stuff related to that history. Um, and what's really cool is by choosing local topics, smaller local historical societies, museums, libraries are, are uh, really happy to help provide material, um, much more than national institutions uh, that, that you might know of. Um, and there are always people at these local institutions who are really happy to help and happy to help with your research. Um, but what we find most important is that you're telling your story, you're telling a story that is close to you and important to you. Um, so for example, these are some potential Maryland topics that we've identified uh, that relate to the current theme. Um, so we have our colonial revolutionary era, we have early national antebellum, civil war, gilded age, civil rights movement to modern day. Um, and you know, these are just potential topics that we've created. Uh, you know, I know that some of you have already picked your topics, but um, you know, these are ones that we also have a lot in our collection for. So for today, when I go through uh, our, our uh, website, um, the example topic I'm gonna pick is Mary Catherine Goddard and Anne Catherine Green. These are some great figures in, in Maryland history. Mary Catherine Goddard published the only newspaper during the American Revolution. Uh, she was the first female postmaster in Baltimore, and she was the first person to print the Declaration of Independence with a signer's name at the bottom, which is really cool. Uh, and we actually have an original one in our collection. Um, and then Anne Catherine Green 
was a printer for the Maryland Gazette, uh, following the death of her husband. Um, it was the only newspaper in Maryland until 1773. Uh, she was the official printer of the province, um, and uh, she helped shape Maryland's views leading up to the American Revolution. So as we're going through, these are the people that I'm going to, to uh, look at and talk about. Um, so the two things I'm gonna talk about are digital resources and our on-site resources. Um, when we changed our name, when we rebranded ourselves, we also got a brand new website that has really great uh, research uh, uh, digital collections or a place where you can research digital collections. Um, you can see the images, you can see the citation material. Um, so uh, uh, we have over a thousand items uh, on the site already and, and uh, about hundreds are being added each, each day. So how to access, um, if you go to our website, um, you'll see our new website. Um, there are a couple of ways to access. You can either go to online resources and do digital collections, which is probably one of the easiest ways, or you can go to library and do find materials. Um, but if I go, go to digital collections, you'll see that this is our digital collections. Um, you can you know, scroll down, you can search uh, by clicking through the pages. Um, you can do a search at the top if you're interested. You can also do a subject search on the side. Um, you can search by date, by genre, by the collection, if you know a specific collection. Um, but one of, the, one of the best ways to search is just by searching uh, at the top. So I'm gonna search Goddard. Um, and when I search uh, Mary Catherine Goddard, I see one result show up. Um, and if I click on it, I will see a larger image of the of the document. Um, so this is the de this is a copy of the Declaration of Independence that she printed in 1777, actually. Um, and you can see that has everyone's name at the bottom. If you click on it, it will uh, expand. Um, and then right there, you can actually see Mary Catherine Goddard's name. Um, but this also helps a lot. Uh, one, you can right click and save these as images, so you can easily access them and use them on your uh, your boards, your your information. Um, or your, your websites. Uh, and then also you can find the creator, you can find the date, you can find a lot of citation information down at the bottom as well. Um, if you wanna know what uh, collection it is in, that's also there. Um, if you wanna know the resource ID or how to find it, you can find it there as well if you wanna come and cite. Um, but this is a great way to really just kind of um, find uh, digital materials. And it's a great place to start your search to see if we have anything uh, already digitized. Um, and if we do, it's, it's really easy to access. Now, um, if we don't have, uh, well, I shouldn't say if we don't, if you wanna come in and, and research, um, you can do that uh, on site. We are open to the public. Our, our research library is open to the public. You're more than welcome to come in. Um, we're, we're taking certain appointments, uh, couple, uh, about three or four appointments a day um, and everyone's spread out um, and we're following CDC guidelines. So you're more than welcome to come in and do research. Um, if you do wanna research, we have three different places you can research. Uh, the first place I would suggest would be through our research guides. Um, these are great uh, uh, guides that we have put together, our librarians have put together. Um, and they basically have everything that is within our collection um, or within a specific theme. Uh, identified. So all the primary and secondary sources that we might have relating, relating to any of these themes right here, um, you'll find on a, a research guide. And I can show you how to access that as well. But as you can see, we have research guides covering African American history, architecture, uh, civil rights movement, you know, newspapers and journals, War of 1812. So covering a lot of different topics. Um, we even have county guides. So if you're doing a specific project on, on Howard County, we might have something in our collection um, related to that, and you'd be able to find that in the county guide. Um, the, the other major place to search is our library catalog. So this is going to allow you to access all 7 million of our documents. Um, and to find that, you just go to our website. Um, again, you can either go to online resources and hit um, library catalog. Uh, to access our finding aids, you would just click finding aids under online resources. Um, or you can go to find materials under library and then scroll down to library catalog, um, click that, and then here you are at all, our library um, catalog. So I'm gonna do a quick search for Anne Green um, and I'll see what we find. Um, so anything relating to Anne Catherine Green, uh, the printer of the province, uh, we have here. Um, 
I want to highlight a couple of different things. You'll see that there's uh, an area that says special collections reading room. You also see something that says main reading room. Special collections are going to be most of our primary sources. So uh, some of the really old documents. Um, the main reading room are going to be mostly secondary sources or pamphlets. Um, so if you see a MS or a rare uh, in front of something, that's going to be a primary source. It's going to be a manuscript collection. If you see PAM, that's going to stand for a pamphlet. Um, so that will also be in our special collections. If you see the, the um, MF242 or something similar, that is going to be a book within our library that you can access as well. But as you see by searching Ann Green, um, we're get, you, there are uh, three pages of, of material. We have the Maryland Gazette. So we have all the old Maryland Gazette she printed. Um, we have uh, a book about early women printers in the Southern colonies. Um, and then we also have some of the items she printed. So say I wanna look at this document right here, I would click on it. Um, and I brought to its page. Uh, so I'll see the author, I'll see the title statement, um, I'll see who published it, when it was published. Um, but if I'm coming in to do research, what's really important is the call number. That's gonna help our librarians figure out what the document is or where it is, um, and will help identify that you, that's the one you want. So when you are researching on here, if you do plan on coming in, um, write down the call numbers that you are interested in and also write down the, the titles and the date. That's really gonna help, help our librarians pull the items for you. Um, and so once you, uh, and so I'll explain in a little bit how to make an appointment, but um, there's also another place to search, which is our finding aids. Um, finding aids are a, a guide to collections. Uh, they tell you everything in a collection and by collection, I mean an organized group of primary sources. Um, so our finding a database is great uh, for, for a couple of reasons. Um, and I'll take us there again. Uh, so to find that, I would either go to find materials or I'd go to uh, finding aids. Um, and so I'm gonna look up Mary Catherine Goddard. I'm gonna search her name and so what I see is I see every single uh, uh, box. So a box of manuscripts or a manuscript collection that has Mary Catherine Goddard uh, or something related to her in it. Um, so if I look at this uh, letter from John Edgar Howard to Mary Catherine Goddard, um, I can see uh, the date that it's from. I can see what box and what folder it is. So when I'm doing research, uh, I'll know exactly what box and what folder to look at when I'm at the manuscript collection. Um, if you expand the bottom, you can see the scope and content of the, the box that this material is in. You can see some creator names. So you can see that in this box, there's also Francis Scott Key um, is in this box. Um, uh, uh, McHenry is in this box. Um, and you can also see the exact location of it. Um, but what's really cool is on the, the right side, you can see every single document, every single letter that is in that manuscript collection. Um, you can see every single, uh, uh, so there are 43 uh, boxes, uh, or I mean 43 folders, so you can see every single item that would be in there. So this is really great if you wanna look specifically at an individual person, you can do that um, by looking at uh, the, the box on the side. And also you can search these as well. Um, so um, you say you want to come and visit, you're more than welcome to. Uh, to plan your visit, you would just go to our library and hit plan your visit. Um, and then you would uh, see, you would scroll down and you would find all the information about preparing for your visit. So you have to make an appointment. Um, and you can see that our main reading room appointments are available uh, Wednesday through Saturday. And our special collections appointments are also Wednesday or Wednesday through Friday and then the second Saturday of each month. So if you wanna look at our main reading room or any items in our main reading room, you can do that every Wednesday and Saturday. Um, special collections, uh, you can do Wednesday through Friday, but on the second Saturday of each month. Um, and then you would just hit the library appointment request form. Um, and you would put uh, all the information you wanna look at. You would put the, the call numbers. So those call numbers that you wrote. Um, and then you see kind of the, the, the rules and what you're gonna uh, see when you come into the library. Um, archives, if you've never been to one, are very intimidating, even for people who are experienced researchers. Um, so you, uh, 
these, this is gonna help you feel more comfortable. You're more than welcome to take photos of the document um, and our staff will give you a piece of paper so you can write down exactly what the uh, number, uh, what the call number is, what the citation information is. Um, and then we also have what we're doing to keep you safe if you wanna come on site and visit as well. Um, and then this is the form, it's a really blurry image of it, but you can see that you would put your name, uh, your email, uh, your phone number, whether or not you're a member, and then um, what, uh, vis what, what space you wanna visit. So the main reading room or the special collections. I should note, if you do wanna visit the special collections, you also have access to the main reading room. So, um, but it's not the other way around if you're coming on a Saturday that our special collections is an open. But if you wanna come uh, and visit our special collections, you're more than welcome to walk and, and pull books off the shelf. Um, you'll, you're able to pull other documents if you find something very interesting as well. Um, and you can research on your, uh, you can bring your computer and laptop and, and you know, research and, and ask to pull documents there. Um, so I'm kind of coming to the end, uh, but we have a online portal that has a list of potential topics, a guide on how to get started and a video containing information. Um, and that can be found uh, on our website under Learn, under Student Research Center, and then at the bottom, you can see National History Day. Um, and on this, you can see our, uh, some potential um, some topics. Uh, this is a video that we produced on how to find stuff in our collection, so it makes it a little bit easier if you, um, if you wanna kind of see what I just said, it's in that video as well. Um, but that's kind of it for me. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, and yeah, I guess on to uh, John. Great, thank you Alex so much for sharing. And um, again, if anyone has questions, please put them in the chat and then we're gonna go next to John from our State Library Resource Center. So good evening, everybody, and thanks so much for coming. Um, we're going to show you a lot of ways and a lot of places to find information that you need for your projects. And there are two, for me, I think there are two overwhelming parts of History Day, right? Two parts of this that feel difficult. And the first part is finding all the things that you need. And the second part, once you have a huge pile of things, <laughs> is turning all of those things into a product that means something, right? That makes an argument that follows a thesis that states a case. So I think we can talk about both of those things, but my the, the thing I want to get over to, to the students particularly, and I want you to take away from this particularly, is that the more material you have, the more cool, interesting things that you can find that you're super excited about, the more uh, fun you're going to have putting those pieces together. Just like Deb's metaphor earlier of the jigsaw, right? A 50 piece puzzle is easier than a thousand piece puzzle, but a thousand piece puzzle is more fun, right? So I'm not saying you need a thousand sources, everybody calm down. Uh, but the more sources you have, the richer and more detailed the picture is going to be. So um, depending on what your topic is, go to these places, visit these uh centers, libraries, museums, archives, all the places that Deb talked about, ask for help, find the material that you need. Um, and the, the State Library Resource Center, the Central Library, the Enoch Pratt Free Library is one of those places. Um, we are located on Cathedral Street. We're just around the corner from uh, where Alex is working. If you wanted to split a day between two places, once our building is reopened, you'd be able to do that. Um, right now, to access our materials, you can request them through interlibrary loan. You can also request them through sidewalk pickup and pick them up outside. You can call us on the phone and we'll help you and, and find information for you. Um, so there, the, the materials that are available are still available. 
As you can see, the building takes up a whole city block. What you don't see in this picture is that there are three basements underground and those basements are entirely bookshelves. So we have one and three quarter million books, but it's not like when you visit um, in Howard and the books that are in the building are all on the floor, right? For us, the vast majority of the books that are in the building are under the floor, right? And so what we want you to do is to ask us, talk to a librarian, call us on the phone, we can pull materials for you. Uh, you can place those into library loan requests at, at your local library. Um, and we can make sure that material gets sent to you. So yeah, things that we can do, you can email us. Each department has an email. You can ask us questions. Um, you can call us on the phone. You can chat with us online. We're gonna talk about that service in just a minute. Uh, we have research web guides, including a National History Day research guide, digital collections, in particular, um, se I mean, several really, really interesting digital collections that are worth a look, but a couple that are worth talking about. Digital Maryland is a collection of resources just about Maryland history. And what we've done uh, is digitized collections from other libraries and other institutions all around the state and made those available. Um, online resources, so databases, um, historical newspapers, two things to note that you can get from the Pratt right now remotely that normally you would have to be in the building to look at. Um, JSTOR, which is a high school college level database that has a series of, of really detailed articles and analysis, uh, themed analysis, and also um, some full text books. And Ancestry.com, which is a genealogy website, a genealogy database. Typically, you use Ancestry.com uh, within the library. Right now, it's available remotely as long as you access it through the library's website. Ancestry might not be something you're super excited about, but maybe we can find genealogical information about the person you're researching or about your topic. So certainly worth taking a look. Um, primary sources, we have a whole bunch of published primary sources. Um, I happen to have a couple here for show and tell. Let's just see if this shows up. Um, so this is a, a reproduction, obviously, of a World War I poster. Um, and this is a request for books to be sent uh, to local libraries to be donated to uh, American soldiers during World War I. So we have plenty of books that have pictures and you can find plenty of books that have pictures of World War I posters. But this book that has pictures of World War I posters was published in London in 1920. So this was published only two years after the end of World War I. And so this counts as a real primary source. The posters themselves clearly are primary sources but this would count as a, an analytical book about what did people think right after the war. And we have books like that about lots and lots of topics, older materials, things that would be difficult to find. Uh, our web guides, if you go to uh, prattlibrary.org slash research slash guides, and maybe, um, students attending if you have your phones handy if you want to take photographs of these slides um, with the ur with urls on please feel free to do that um, so we curate lists reliable information on a wide range of topics updated regularly and they're free um, you can see here early maryland history genealogy and family history but um, the guide we're really going to be looking for is National History Day. 
right? And that has a lot of information about the theme and links to sources and links to places that are going to be useful for you. This is Digital Maryland Online Digital Collections. So you can see here, it's, the website is digitalmaryland.org. Um, 17th and 18th century documents relating to the founding development of the colony of Maryland in the Hugh Young collection. Um, five letters written between 1778 and 1800 about historical figures in the American Revolution. We have a significant collection of, Ameri uh, of Maryland suffrage materials. The, the picture of the historical house there, that's a lantern slide, um, which is a piece of glass with a picture painted on it so that you hold it up in front of a flashlight, uh, a lantern, and it projects onto the wall. Um, so some of the things in, this, in these collections are really, really wonderful and really interesting. And you can see there maps, artwork, posters, books, um, lots to look at. Um, live chat with a librarian. If you go to, uh, again, prattlibrary.org and email a question, you can chat with one of us. You can ask us about your topic. Um, if the folks, the folks that you're chatting with will help you, and then if your question is, is more involved, they'll forward it to one of us in one of the history departments and we'll follow up with you and, and give you additional help. So you can reach us that way. You can also see the telephone reference phone number there, 410-396-5430. And if you want to give us a call on that number, um, we're in the building every week, uh, Monday through Saturday, um, and we're answering uh, that number. In special collections, we have um, some really, really interesting documents, um, particularly local documents, but others too. So uh, Edgar Allan Poe materials, including letters, um, including an acrostic poem that his wife wrote for him for his birthday which is really, really cool. Um, the H.L. Mencken collection, which is one of the largest and most significant single author collections in the world, not just even in Maryland or in the US, but in the world. We have a lot of his papers, a lot of his materials, and some specialists who work with that collection. Um, because we're a government depository library and have been for a long, long time, we have original war posters. We don't just have books about war posters. So if you're interested in how the government communicated with society before there was an internet and before there was a television, right? This is how they did that. Um, women's suffrage in Maryland, Baltimore views, um, drawings, perspective drawings of various viewpoints of the city. And we have also a significant collection of greetings cards and postcards. So if you're interested in historic Christmas cards and how that was communication in history, um, there's a, a huge collection of those to look at and check out in the special collections department. And I mean, check out as in look at, not check out as in take home. Um, so departments that can help you. They're, Every department in the library will help you, um, but there are history departments that can help you more. And this is one thing that's different about the Pratt and other large urban public libraries compared with you know, li public libraries that you may be used to using, right? We're, we're divided up into departments. So in the African-American department, you'll find a lot of our materials about the history and culture of African-Americans. Right, we have a ton of secondary sources, but we also have primary sources like the Black Panther newspaper, like the Afro, um, and uh, inf you know information about lots of uh, relevant topics. The Maryland Department focuses on the history, politics, law, biography, religion, transportation, education in Maryland. There are um, 
every department, every history department is going to be able to help you somewhat with a history question. But as things get specific, as you drill down, as you follow Deb's triangle, right, from a broad topic to a specific set of sources, a specific thesis, a specific argument, um, we're probably going to send you to the Maryland department if you have a local topic. Social science and history department where I work, anthropology, archaeology, criminology, education, geography and travel, national and international history, law and marriage. Um, we have a ton of stuff about cities and the sort of history of, of uh, cities, lo the local conditions throughout the US, as well as the sort of national conditions. So anything in those sort of topic areas, we're happy to find uh, information for you. One thing we have in the social science and history department, we don't have many manuscript sources. Those are in the Maryland department. Those are in the um, special collections, but we have a ton of published primary sources where a publisher has collated those things, collected them, put them in bound volumes, and a lot of those circulate. So if you can't take the fancy manuscript copy home, we may have a circulating uh, bound copy, a circulating published copy that you can take home. Uh, to contact us directly to find out more about the collections and the individual departments, you go to slurk.info slash collections, and that other slash on the end is important, I think. Um, and you'll see this list of places. And then some of the sources, you, you, the departments you might want to choose, African-American department, business science and technology, fine arts, music, Maryland, social science and history, and special collections, depending on your topic. This is what you'll click through to, is a, a page that tells you what you'll find. And down at the bottom of the page, the contact information, the phone numbers, all that good stuff. And these are some of the other departments that can help you. In the periodicals department, we have long runs of journals, magazines, and newspapers. Um, and there's a, always a lot of information in historical newspapers. We want you to look at that. We have databases. I know that Howard County Library does too. We have those databases um, with you know, every edition of the Baltimore Sun every edition of the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Chicago Tribune, the Christian Science Monitor, from the 19th century forward, right? So 200 years often, or nearly 200 years of newspapers. Business Science Technology, Sights and Sounds, which is Best and Next, um, which has audio visual materials, 16 millimeter films, audio books, recordings, vinyl. So there's lots of good stuff there. Um, humanities department, if you're interested in philosophy or religion, if your topic touches on that. Um, fine arts and music for the history of visual arts or architecture. And again, if we're talking about communication, a visual arts topic might be something that would be super interesting, right? What does this statue tell you? Or what, what does this painting tell you? Or how does it communicate? Um, and as we said, in special collections, rare books, photographs, maps, posters, postcards. So call us, email us, ask us about your topic. We'll help you. A number of us are judges um, for all levels of the contest, right through from school contests to the national contest. And we've seen a lot of projects. We've been doing this a while. We can help you to really gather the sources that you need and even you know to shape your argument um our class is on thursday night introduction to historical research you'd be welcome to attend again take a quick photograph of that slide if you'd like to to grab the url and just be aware that you know we're here to help you and, and we absolutely want to do that I'm going to uh, turn things back to Leah now. Thank you. We hope to hear from you. Thank you so much, John. And um, 
Thank you um, for all the great resources uh, that you've shared with us tonight. And we're gonna go next to Maryland Humanities and to Leah. All right, thank you, Lori. Um, good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, so my name is Leah Atnat and I work for Maryland Humanities. And we actually run the state level history day contest. So we don't have a library or any archival collections of our own, but we really do care that you have the resources that you need to do this project to the best of your ability. So we are going to try to point you towards some resources that we think are really valuable. So tonight I'm going to show you three different websites that you are going to find very helpful for your project. So bear with me as I share my screen. And the first website that I'm sharing with you is our website, mdhumanities.org. And I'm just gonna show you how to navigate through it. So if you click, if you hover over programs and then click on Maryland History Day, it will take you to the History Day page. And I'm gonna pop this in the chat. Oh, you've got it in the chat. Thank you, Lori. Um, and if you click actually on four students, this is going to have everything that you need to complete your project. So scrolling down, we've got four different tabs that take you through different parts of the project. For this first one, we've got a number of topic lists from different institutions around the state that can help you um, if you don't know, if you don't have a topic yet and you want to do something local. Um, some of them are from people that we've heard from today. So we've got the Pratt Library, which is where John Jewett works. And we've got the Maryland Center for History and Culture, which is where Alex is from. Um, and so if you click through on one of these, I'm gonna click on the Reginald Lewis Museum. Um, the Reginald Lewis Museum has put together a number of specific good history day topics based on the collections that they have at their museum. So if you go to their museum's website, you can find some objects that they have in their collections, or if you have the chance to actually go to the museum, you can find out more information about things like Brown versus Board and Lillian Carroll Jackson. Um, so that's a great place to start if you're looking for topics. Um, next, if you need a place to find sources, um, we've got some good information here about how to find sources. We've got some links out to another site for building some of the skills that you will need for this project, like writing the thesis statement and working with primary sources. And I will actually show you the website where those activities exist in just a second. But what I like about this page is if you go down to the bottom, we have this nice long list of, um, of different websites that are from libraries, they're from museums, they're from historical societies. And these are all the, the research institutions that we trust. So before you go to Google, check out some of these websites and see if you can start your research here. The next tab we've got is sources and citing. So again, we've got some more activities to work on those research skills, to work on those citation skills. And then the last tab on here, NHD resources, has all the material that we get from the national organization, National History Day. So we've got the theme book to help inspire you about this year's theme, communication and history. We've got the rule book so you know exactly how, how long your writing should be or what dimensions your project should be. Um, we've got information about the interviews that you will be doing with the judges at your contest. We've got some project examples. So this is a great place to look for, you know, anything that you might need to know about the contest, anything logistical. Um, if you need help finding a good resource for it, this is a place for you. And then under students, we also have, um, if you're interested in getting feedback about your project later on in the process, you can find that information here. We have information about research days at some of the local libraries. And we also have a separate page for sample projects. And, um, and this is a great place to look just so you can see what is possible. If you are interested in making an exhibit, but you don't know what it's supposed to look like, this can give you some ideas. Um, okay. Uh, some of these are right on the page. Others like the documentary link out. I think most of these are on YouTube. So um, this is a great 
resource for you. If you're doing a History Day project, you should know about our website, mdhumanities.org. All right, the next uh, website that I'm going to show you is thinkport.org slash TPS. And when you get to thinkport.org slash TPS, you should click on inquiry kits for social studies. And the inquiry kits, so first of all, I should explain inquiry. So inquiry is the process of asking questions and looking for the answers as a way to find more information. So um, as soon as you come up with your topic, you're going to develop some questions in your mind that are going to help guide your research process. So you might be thinking, I wanna do a project on Frederick Douglass, but what do I need to know about him? Okay, what does he have to do with communication? Well, he started his own newspaper, for example. Um, and I've actually got Frederick Douglass right here. Uh, so he started his own newspaper, but what did he print in that newspaper? What was he trying to communicate to people? Well, we know that he was an abolitionist. Um, so how did he you know, try to get people to understand his views? What methods did he use? So this is, these are the sorts of questions that you can come up with in your mind. And the inquiry kits that we have here are actually primary store sets. So this is a good place to go to look for a topic if you haven't picked one yet, or to kickstart your research if you have picked a topic. There are four collections here. So we've got elementary level inquiry kits, which you don't have to be in elementary school to look at. These are good for everyone. And we actually have some topics in here that fit perfectly with this year's theme. So take a look there as well. And then we have US history, world history and US government inquiry kits. And there are almost 200 kits in total. So you will likely find something of interest to you. I'm gonna go into the US history inquiry kit so we can take a look at some of these. So once you're inside this collection, you'll see that we have it organized even further by unit and it's chronological. So if you already have a topic in your mind that you're curious about, you can find it by looking for the time period of that event. Um, and you'll also see that each era of history has its own sort of theme that goes along with it, like creating a national political system and culture or geographic and economic change shape the nation. So we try to sort of summarize what was happening in the country at that time just to give you an idea of what we have. And then if you're interested in seeing what topics we have for one of these units, you click on view topics and click here too. So you see the topics that we have are already narrowed down pretty well for a history day project because we created these with history day in mind. So I'm gonna click on the Pony Express because I think that that fits pretty well with this year's theme communication. And so inside the inquiry kit, we've got three thinking questions to get you started with that process of inquiry, of asking more questions about your topic. And then the kit contains five primary sources about your topic and one secondary source. So this just gets you started on your research right away. You can use all of these in your bibliography. You can analyze them. You can write about them in your project. And um, we have a little summary of each one, but on each of these sources, you can click through and it links out to the place where that source exists on the internet. So this map of the Pony Express route from the 1860s uh, lives at the Library of Congress, which is the, the library of the entire United States. So you can find lots of stuff here on US history. And I can actually click on this source. And when I click on it, I'm able to zoom in. And I can zoom way in and I can actually read all of these stops along the way on the Pony Express, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, and we see that it stops in Salt Lake City. We see that it ends in Sacramento. And if I scroll down this page, I can get all that extra information about this that I need, all that metadata. So I've got the title of the source, the people who created it, 
where it was published and the year it was published. So we see that it was actually published 100 years after the time period that it was depicting. And if we go down even further, down, 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 and you see this little tab for cite this item, if you click the plus sign, they have citations already made up for you. So you can just copy and paste these into your bibliography, write your own annotation. Um, I'm gonna go back up to the top and show you how you can use this site to continue your research. So if I decide to do my research on the Pony Express, I can search further at the Library of Congress. So I'm gonna search Pony Express and I'm going to put it in quotes to keep that phrase together. And we saw that the Pony Express ended in California. So I'm gonna see if there's anything else about uh, the Pony Express in California. And so here you see we've got over a thousand uh, sources that match that, um, that search. And we've got a few photographs of former stops on the Pony Express, which is pretty cool. So you can click through on any of these and zoom in again, like we did for that last source. We've got um, a book about a Pony Express rider. I don't know if it is fiction or nonfiction, so you'll have to click through and find out. And then we've got some photographs of statues of Pony Express riders. So that shows the modern day legacy. It shows that we still appreciate um, that part of history. Okay, so um, that was one from the US kits. I'm gonna take you back. And this goes all the way down to the modern day. I'll just show you. So we got modern America, 1981 to present, a number of topics under each one. I can go back again and show you something under world history. And with world history, we go back even further. We have some kits relating to ancient history, as you can see here. And I'm going to go into collapse, expansion, and exploration. And we've got Martin Luther and the Reformation. So if you're not familiar with this, Martin Luther was a, a German monk who was dissatisfied with uh, the Catholic Church and he communicated his views by posting his complaints on a church door. So, and then that's called the 19, 95 Theses. And so this was, you know, that was how they communicated back then. They would write it by hand and you needed to post it somewhere public where everyone could see. So that's another great example of an older form of communication. And um, finally, I'll show you one more kit in our US government inquiry kits. So here in the US uh, government inquiry kits, we've got um, units on the different branches of government and then the different areas of political life that the government has its hand in, like economic policy, domestic policy, and foreign policy. And of course, communication is key when governments from around the world need to keep their relationships with each other. So a declaration of war communicates to another country that you are going to war. And something like the Treaty of Versailles um, communicated that the war had ended and that they would um, there would be peace between the countries. So um, those are the examples that I have from the inquiry kits. Um, if you go over to the right side menu, there is, um, there's a little image here that says research learning modules. So if you click there and you can click it no matter what kit you're in, it will always be on this right hand menu. And here we've got these activities that I was talking about related to different skills that you need to build for this project. So we have um, modules for analyzing primary sources, for writing a thesis statement, um, evaluating sources. Are they useful? Are they reliable? Um, I'm going to go into how to cite the right way just to show you what these look like. Um, so this is going to show you um, how to avoid plagiarism. And if you scroll down, um, we've got objectives here and a short video to show you what it's going to be about. We've got a few steps in Learn It that'll refresh your memory. If you don't, under, if you don't remember what plagiarism is, this will give you a refresher. Um, we have some interactive steps under try it and review it um, to make sure you understand what you just learned. We got a little quiz in there. 
And then in Conquer It, you're going to try it out yourself. So we give you some information and we ask you what the student can do to avoid plagiarism. And then finally, there's an exit ticket to make sure you've completed all the steps. Um, so that is um, a fun way to refresh your memory, to practice some of those skills that you're going to be using. All right, um, finally, the last website that I'm going to share with you today is MarylandHistoryDayTopics.wordpress.com. And this is a site that we just um, put together this year with topics that all relate to this year's theme, communication and history. And I'm gonna go down and click on view research prompts. And here in this one, we have it organized by theme instead of chronologically. So you can think about what your interests are um, and you can search in that way instead. So if you're interested in the African diaspora, for example, we have something on that. If you're interested in disability history, we have a collection of topics on that. Um, we have indigenous history, we have LGBTQ history, we have women's history and sports. Um, but I'm gonna go to Maryland history and show you some of the topics that we have in there. So here, sorry, I can't see all of it. <laughs> um, all right, so one of the topics that we have in this one is the Baltimore Afro-American, which uh, John referred to earlier. Um, it's the longest running black owned newspaper in the United States. Um, and it was founded in 1892. So this obviously relates to the theme because it's a newspaper, but you can think about um, what stories they chose to communicate to the public. How did they communicate them differently than the more mainstream newspapers of the time? And to start you off on your research, we link you out to some great sources to start with. So we've got one from the Library of Congress, from PBS, and we've got um, a short podcast as well. Um, we have a, a kit on quilts and quilters. So um, uh, African Americans used to make story quilts that would communicate to the next generation their family history. So you might look into that. Um, and that is a part of Maryland history as well. Um, all right, so I'm gonna check the chat. Oh, yep, we got one on the Oyster Wars as well. Thank you. Um, and that's all I've got for today. So I've got those three websites for you, um, mdhumanities.org, thinkport.org slash TPS, and marylandhistorydaytopics.wordpress.com. And they are all great for um, finding your topic, narrowing it down, starting your research, and, um, and finding some more sites to do your research. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Leah. And again, thank you to all our presenters. I hope that um, all the students participating tonight are inspired by everything that's out there. And um, the key takeaway for me is that this, uh, you have a rich access to amazing uh, resources and ask for questions, be, ask, uh, ask the experts uh, if you have questions because people are out there willing to help you uh, and uh, you have uh, experts that are uh, judges, have expertise in the subject matter and know about History Day. So um, we have time now at the end of our session to do some Q&A. This is a great opportunity uh, as a student to type your questions in the chat and uh, ask someone who has been through the process either as a judge or if you have a specific question about your topic or finding resources, um, please do so now. Hi, Lori, we did have a question from earlier about researching something older than 1935. Do people have any suggestions for that? I was going to ask, is it a US history topic or a world history topic? Um, it's a US history topic. I would say the Library of Congress and the National Archives should have lots of information about that. Um, and one great place to start on the Library of Congress website is Chronicling America. 
And that is has a wealth of historic newspapers. And I can actually, um, I'll type that in the chat so you can link out there. And it looks like we have in the chat too, um, if uh, any of our speakers want to address uh, about world wars and any specific sites that specialize in world wars. So I would suggest for world wars, checking out the National World War II Museum. They have a great website um, with great uh, access to sources and, and they have a section on students and teachers and, and they have the resources there. So that would be probably the first place to check out. The um, Library of Congress also has a veterans history project that has a lot of oral histories, first person interviews um, with veterans from uh, those wars and previous ones. Uh, and also uh, because these are 20, 20th century events, right there is a lot of um really really great information in newspapers right you can track these things as they unfold by reading newspaper articles in sequence so and uh, we also have a whole bunch of regimental histories and like official records at, at the library from from world war one and world war two so certainly worth asking about those as well We also have a question on the uh, information on the space race. Anybody have any good sources for the space race? I think again, the National Archives is a great place to start and I can type that um, in the chat as well, just archives.gov. So, uh, Elizabeth, I see your question about things taking place in England. Uh, and I have no idea how to help you with, I kid, uh, right? Um, the, the US, the UK National Archives is called the National Archives, um, just like here, but you wanna make sure you're looking for National Archives London. Lots of their materials are digitized some of them are digitized and you you have to pay to access the um the the contents of the folder uh, but it, it's you don't pay an awful lot and there's often really good stuff in there so that would be one possibility um museums here because uh soldiers from the u.s were, were based in england museums here will have some great information too um, and then in london there's a museum called the imperial war museum and that they have uh lots and lots of information about most of the wars that england and britain were involved in but particularly you know the the 20th century wars so um those would be really good places too. And to heaven, you are asking about um, sources for uh, Martin Luther. I would also suggest looking at Fordham University's uh, medieval source book. They have a lot of really nice primary sources. Any other questions? If not, I think what we'll do is, um, again, thank our presenters for uh, sharing their time and their expertise with us and please uh, reach out to them. 
and reach out to us at the library as well. We're happy to connect you to resources to help you have a successful History Day project. This um, session will be posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, it just takes a few days for it to get processed and uh, we'll have this available to you. And um, we would ask, please, uh, if you could help us out and let us know what you thought of our um, class tonight with a survey. So I will follow up with an email. Uh, I seem to have lost my link to the survey. Uh, I've been throwing all kinds of other links into the chat. So I have lost the link to the survey, um, but I will send it out in an email to everyone. Um, so you can let us know what you thought of the program tonight. And if you have any other, oh, there it is. Victoria's got it in the chat. Um, and you can give us some feedback on tonight's program and uh, suggestions for other programs. So thank you everyone so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you coming. And again, thank you to our presenters. It was great, uh, lots of great resources. Good luck everyone with your projects too. <laughs>